When we think of a world where we as humans get freed up to do our meaningful work because AI, automation, and robotics are removing almost 100% of human labor, let me tell you, that world is not very far off. Hey there, welcome back if you've been here before. Welcome if you're new. My name is Julia McCoy and I explore the rabbit hole of AI. Two of the biggest players in the AI space, which includes Microsoft, they have a big portion of investment in OpenAI and Google, powering Google Search, of course, Gemini, and many advancements in generative AI. Well, these two big players just unveiled some of the biggest updates we have seen to date. This May, during the Google I.O. keynote and the OpenAI Spring update, both of which were live streamed on YouTube. I watched all almost three and a half hours of footage, and there were a couple things that really stood out to me. And these features that both Google and OpenAI announced are pieces in the puzzle to get us to an almost fully automated world. In this video, I'll share with you what those are. So let's jump right into it. There are two huge things that both OpenAI and Google announced. And these two things mean a new frontier in AI is opening up in front of us. And it's actually here. We don't have to wait decades. We don't have to wait centuries. What are those two things? the vision capabilities of ChatGPT and Google's Project Astra, bringing to the world a universal AI agent. Here's a clip of the live stream of the vision capabilities of ChatGPT from OpenAI's spring update. Take a look. So let me take out um, a computer for this. Okay, so I'm gonna open the ChatGPT desktop app like Mira was talking about before. Okay, and to give a bit of background on what's going on, so here we have um, a computer and on the screen we have some code and then the ChatGPT voice app is on the right. So ChatGPT will be able to hear me but it can't see anything on the screen. So I'm gonna highlight the code, command C it and then that will send it to ChatGPT and then I'm gonna talk about the code to ChatGPT. Hey ChatGPT. Hey there, how's it going? Yeah, it's going really well. I was wondering if you could help me with a uh, coding problem today. Of course, I'd love to help you out. What's the coding problem you're dealing with? Okay, I'm gonna share with you some code. One second. Sure thing, take your time. Okay, so I just shared some code with you. Could you give me a really brief one sentence description of what's going on in the code? This code fetches daily weather data for a specific location and time period, smooths the temperature data using a rolling average, annotates a significant weather event on the resulting plot, and then displays the plot with the average, minimum, and maximum temperatures over the year. Awesome, thanks so much. And in the code, there's this function foo. Can you describe to me what the plot would look like if I had versus didn't have this function? Sure. The function foo x y takes in a data frame x containing temperature data and a window size y for calculating the rolling mean. It smooths the average temperature minimum temperature and maximum temperature columns by applying a rolling mean over the specified window. With the foo function, the plot would show smoother temperature lines because the rolling mean reduces the noise or fluctuations in the data. Awesome. This makes... Thanks so much. So yeah, I definitely will want to apply this function. And so I'm going to uh, generate the plot and then show it to you. Give me one second. Absolutely. Take your time. I'm excited to see the plot when you're ready. Yeah. So, so far, ChatGPT has only been able to see the code, and now I'm gonna run it, and then I'll use the vision capabilities of the ChatGPT desktop app so it can actually see everything going on on the screen as well. Did you catch what he said? Vision capabilities of ChatGPT. This means that ChatGPT can see, read, and translate what it sees and reads real time. To quote some other YouTubers out there, this is downright spooky. But what it simply is, is a technological advancement of vision capabilities now in ChatGPT. Let's play the rest of the clip. Okay, ChatGPT, I'm sharing with you the plot now. I'm wondering if you can give me a really brief one sentence overview of what you see. The plot displays smoothed average, minimum, and maximum temperatures throughout 2018, with a notable annotation marking a big rainfall event in late September. Fantastic. I have another question for you. Um, which months do you see the hottest temperatures and roughly what temperatures do those correspond to? The hottest temperatures occur around July and August. The maximum temperature during these months is roughly between 25 degrees and 30 degrees, 77 degrees Fahrenheit to 86 degrees Fahrenheit. 
What's going on with the y-axis? Is this in Celsius or Fahrenheit? The y-axis is in Celsius. The temperatures are labeled accordingly, such as average temperature, minimum temperature, and maximum temperature. Yeah. So as we can see, you know, not only can ChatGPT help me solve very easy linear um, algebra equations that I need help with, it can also interact with you know, code bases and see the outputs of plots and everything like this going on on a computer. And if you read the comments on this video, I think they reflect how we all might react to news like this. AKA, hello Skynet, I'm a huge fan, please don't do my grandkids any harm. But that's a natural response whenever we're looking at an AI that can see, read, and respond real time. That is unbelievable. And that's one of the main things that OpenAI announced that absolutely blew my mind in the May spring update. And by the way, if you catch what John Shulman recently said, he's the OpenAI co-founder on Dorkish Patel's podcast on his YouTube channel. He said that in just one or two years, we're gonna see ChatGPT do things like a whole coding project from start to finish. And we're gonna work with it as if it's our assistant. And when Dorkish asked him, what's the possibility of AGI anytime soon? His answer was simply, yeah, I think that's reasonable. When Google held their IO conference just a day after OpenAI's live stream of their spring update, they revealed a ton of things in that almost two hour update, like Gemini Flash, AI overviews coming to search, which is basically a glorified version of SGE, an Ask Photos assistant that I thought was pretty cool. But what blew my mind from Google was something that actually mimicked what we saw in that mind blowing update from ChatGPT with GPT 4.0. And what Google dropped on us was something called Project Astra that functions as a real-time universal AI agent. Built with Gemini, multimodal, you can look through a device and Project Astra will tell you what it sees, define and describe what it sees, help you find something you misplaced in a room, which resembled GPT 4.0's multimodal properties as well. Check out this clip of Google's Project Astra. Watch all the way through to the end when the beta demonstrator picks up a pair of glasses that totally hints at an all new pair of AR virtual reality glasses from Google that might actually feature Project Astra, which I think is a brilliant way to interact with an AI agent. Check it out. What can I add here to make this system faster? Adding a cache between the server and database could improve speed. What does this remind you of? Schrodinger's cat. All right, uh, give me a band name for this duo. Golden Stripes. <laughs> Nice. Now these updates haven't rolled out across to everyone. They're still in beta and testing. I will say that I got access to GPT 4.0 and the capabilities are blowing my mind. It wrote an entire page of code for a website for me. Now granted, when I ran the code past an expert web developer, he said that code would bog down a website because it didn't have the correct CSS wrappers, meaning it would translate horribly for SEO. So you don't just want to copy paste and publish, you want to check what ChatGPT, even GPT 4.0 gives you. But that said, the fact that we're here with these kinds of capabilities from both Google and ChatGPT, funded largely by Microsoft, demonstrate leaps forward in advancement in the AI field as a whole. And when we think multimodal, going beyond LLMs, going beyond text, and going real time into the audio visual world, well, that could be transplanted into humanoids, wearables, and help us experience the world in an entirely different way. I can't wait for Apple's Worldwide Developer Conference, which is happening June 10th through the 14th of this year. They better have something astounding to get up here neck and neck with Microsoft and Google. And I actually believe they will. My devices of choice are always Apple, the MacBook Pro, the Apple Watch, the iPhone. The amount of data that Apple has been gathering from me through these three devices down to my heart rate when I'm bike riding is utterly insane. So I do think that we will see Apple 
potentially hit us with something even greater in June, but the verdict is out. We will have to wait and see. Another mind-blowing release that Google dropped as if it was no big deal during the I.O. keynote was AlphaFold 3, which predicts the structure and interactions of all of life's molecules. Developed by Google DeepMind, AlphaFold 3 is going to transform our understanding of biology and life. This is the first time we've ever had a breakthrough in understanding life's molecules through AI. And AlphaFold 3 by Google can predict the structure and interactions of all of life's models with never seen before accuracy. So by the way, that was something else that Google dropped this May during their conference. No big deal. It's going to fuel the study of genomes and research in that area quite a bit. If you look at this graph, created by ARK Invest, a major investor behind AI companies. Before GPT-3 came out, it was expected that we needed almost a century, 80 years before AGI would happen. When GPT-3 came out, that number dropped down to 50 years. And when Google demonstrated its advanced conversational agent, Lambda 2, that number dropped down to 34 years. When GPT-4 came out, that number went down to 18 years being away from AGI and then down yet again to eight years from AGI. And with the vision capabilities and the multimodal functionality in AI that we are seeing with these tremendous announcements, keep in mind the verdict is out around how stable and robust these are. And it's going to take some innovative minds to figure out how and where and when to plug them into the right use cases in society. So we have yet to see all of that emerge, but the baseline functionality is here, meaning AGI, like Ray Kurzweil said, could be mere years away. His prediction is 2029. If you watched the Google I.O. conference, you saw OpenAI's spring update live stream and you have thoughts, drop them in the comments. I'd love to hear from you. We are living in history as it unfolds, which is both incredibly exciting and somewhat scary. It's easy to let fear get a hold of us because we don't know what's coming. I have far less fear than I have optimism because I know that this will, to use ChatGPT's favorite word, unlock a ton of capabilities and advancements for the human race as a whole. And that's what I'm looking forward to. Let's be optimists, not pessimists. And let's seize opportunities while we can and make the most of this new future. I'll see you down the next rabbit hole.